Yo, what is going on everyone? I am back with another video. It is going to be a very short first impressions on my Vaxi XE mouse that they were very kind enough to send me. This is definitely like one of my top five mice already after only about three days of use and I will explain why. And then I am going to be doing a very, very small comparison between the Vaxi PA Black and the coded ones. And the only reason is because they were kind enough to also send this pad out to me and I do want to explain the main differences between the pads and which one I still recommend. So first off for the Vaxi PA Black. This pad, the only real difference is that this pad doesn't have a coating. So they said that it would make it a little bit slower, uh, add a little bit of stopping power, which honestly, the main thing that I can feel is really the glide. The glide doesn't feel as smooth and as cloudy as the ones with coating. The stopping power is honestly, I think better on this pad. I do prefer this one over the ones with designs. And out of the two that I would recommend is always going to be the pad without a coating. I would really hate for someone to love a pad and then they have to buy the exact same one three, four months, five months down the line. So I would just recommend the PA Black over the ones with designs. Unless you don't even care and you just want a super cool design, then get the ones with it. In terms of how they work together, I do feel like they work really, really well together, especially in tax shooters. Valorant, it is such a good combination, but I did find a way better combination that actually has improved my aim scores. And a big reason I take aim scores into account is because I always want a controlled environment for what I'm reviewing to really test true performance. If you take working out, for example, and you change your training and the way you're eating at the same time, you're not going to know what is really benefiting you. If you look like shit, you're not going to know what really changed how you look and how you feel in the gym. And it's the same application I use for reviewing mice. And what I mean by that is the reason I use Aim Lab and Kovacs a lot, that is like 80% of how I judge products for myself mainly because I need a controlled environment. I need to be doing the same scenarios. I need to be in the same room temperature. Everything I want as consistent as possible to really differentiate how I perform. In game, is is just there's just too many variables for me. I could be way worse than the other team. I could have maybe mid teammates or something. I could have I could be having an off day. I could have warmed up a little more. There's all of these factors that come into in-game performance. And while I do still take that into account, that is not the bulk of how I review products. The bulk is always going to be controlled environments so that I can clearly see the fluctuations in my scores, making sure that I can be consistent with products also. That is also another very, very big thing for me. And I did just want to explain that and really just hammer the point home that I feel like aim training is honestly the best form of being able to see consistency with myself, I don't care about how other people do it. That is how I do my reviews. And I really think that consistency, controlled environments are the, really tr are the only true ways to really judge a product. And now onto the pad I feel pairs best with the XE mouse. I do feel like the Sarah pad, this is not the kin. I am still waiting for my kin to arrive. But the Sarah pad has absolutely been the best pad, for, at least for myself, even even though I feel like it's a very speedy pad, I don't feel like there's as much stopping power as I would like. I just feel like the pairing between these two, the XE and the Sarah pad, have just worked so incredibly well for me. The main scenarios that I focus on for performance is going to be speed, precision, and tracking, and smoothness. And all of those things I have felt perform incredible with this combo. The main reason I feel like these two perform really well is... I do feel like this is a bulkier mouse than what I am used to. You can see that it is pretty wide. Compared to a mouse, I am more used to the Starlight. You can clearly see how different these mice are. And I'm only focusing on width. I'm not focusing on shape or length right now. I'm only focusing on width. And you can see how big the XE is compared to the final mouse. And something that's really important for me, and I do hope will get changed hopefully in the future is this cord right here because it is not like the traditional vaxi cables it is extended a lot and i actually do feel like there's a bit of weight in the front which is why i gravitated to a more speedy pad because if i was using this on a control pad i felt this dongle a lot not to say that this mouse is heavy at all this is probably one of the lighter mice I've tried this year and it's probably because of the size to weight ratio. While I would consider this mouse more of a medium to large than a small to medium, the weight is so good on this mouse it feels hollow but that doesn't mean that they sacrifice quality at all. This thing is a brick. 
I consider myself a pretty strong person. I feel like I could crush certain mice in my hand, and this is definitely not one of those mice that I could crush. I think another interesting change was the change to buttons. I don't feel like they're as tactile as my MPO1S, and I'm really not sure as to why that feels that way. And there is also some pre and post travel, not that much, but it is enough to notice it. But Honestly, even in games like Valorant where you're constantly spam clicking or even in like aim trainers, if you're playing grid shot or trial frenzy, like you're going to be spam clicking a lot. And it really hasn't hindered my performance at all. It's just something that I wish was a little bit better because I am a good click enjoyer. However, something that is a, a really, really welcome change is the scroll wheel change. I will bring on my MPL1S because it, <laughs> it's actually still plugged into my computer, but I will show the difference between the two scroll wheels. So the volume difference... <laughs> Which, honestly, I don't feel like I've ever really cared if, like, what my scroll wheel sounds like. But this is... I can't even hear it. Even with my open back headphones, I can't hear it over my voice in-game at all. And it's really nice and smooth. I do perform more tactile scroll wheels. But, honestly, this scroll wheel is, in my opinion, including the how it feels and the noise cancellation. I feel like this scroll wheel is miles better than their original. Their feet is also a really interesting design change. They're really big. The AX and the MPL1 had like the same exact feet. I'm really surprised that they went for a much bigger design, but these perform really well. I do know that a lot of people will say bigger mice feet make more contact with the pad. So sometimes if you're using a control pad, it'll feel a lot slower. However, I do not feel like that is the case with these feet. These stock feet are amazing. They feel a little bit like tiger ice feet, but not as smooth on the glide. I would consider them slightly lower friction on startup and the stopping power is really good. Even on a seropad, you can see it come to a complete stop. And another thing too is normally I don't like shapes like this where the highest point is in the middle. However, where the indentation is, is perfectly placed for someone that plays claw where my thumb ring and pinky finger are the most important fingers for my grip because I always will pull the mouse into my palm and it makes incredible contact with this middle part of my palm and the only reason I always want contact here is because that is where as a claw gripper I get the most amount of control that I could possibly get and it isn't uncomfortable I I have said in so many past reviews that I have very very small short hands I, my hands are 17 by 11 to 12 inches and these feels and this mouse still feels really good you can see where my fingers are they don't go all the way over here which is where i would like them to be i am surprised that vaxi went with such a large shape honestly i feel like their other mice were very very in between large and small and i feel like they were a really good size and something i feel like compares a lot to this mouse is probably going to be like a pulse fire haste or honestly, a katana, the ninjutsu katana. I feel like those two mice are probably the most similar feeling to the shape, but neither beat it in quality and neither beat it in performance for myself. But yeah, that's pretty much all for the first impressions. I will also get a review out on my Sarah pad. This pad has been absolutely incredible. And honestly, this pad has improved my scores a lot. So in terms of like pure performance, this is one of my better performing pads. And I have like pretty much no complaints other than like stickiness really and that's something that is just going to be there because it's a hard pad but yeah if you guys have any questions at all about the mouse i will try to answer a lot of them oh and this button i do not use at all it's a productivity button i never ever use buttons like that i'm just glad that this is not the dpi button i always like what they do on the bottom i like all the buttons on the bottom just in case on the off chance, I have a absolute spasm in my hand and I start clicking everything. But yeah, if you guys have any questions at all, I will be answering them. And I also will be doing a full review much later on this mouse. I did just want to talk about my first impressions, how I feel about the shape. Their first symmetrical shape and it feels so good. I genuinely really, really like this mouse. And this is easily going to be in one of my top five mice. But yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next upload. Peace. Oh, 
ンコツだな。君の負けだ